on World News Tonight. Struck again. Russia targeted another massive missile attack on the frozen Ukraine as G7 imposes oil caps. Volcano threat. Mauna Loa is still spewing lava at its second week as it now threatens vital infrastructure. Heightened tensions. North Korea does not seem to back down on their nuclear game as they fire more artillery shells. And dazzling lights. Sydney steps up the seasonal spirit as homes dazzle with Christmas light displays. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening, and thank you for joining us on World News. We're starting off with the war in Ukraine. A global price cap on Russian seaborne crude oil took effect, aimed at limiting Moscow's ability to finance its war in Ukraine. In response, Russia fired a massive barrage of missiles against Ukraine, resulting in casualties and damage to key infrastructure. Russia targeted Ukraine in yet another massive wave of missile attacks on Monday. Reports say at least two people were killed in strikes in Zaporizhia, with the east of the country suffering serious disruption to electricity supplies, while the southern city of Odessa lost power. More than 70 missiles were launched, targeting cities including Kiev as well as key infrastructure. Debris from one missile crossed the Ukrainian border, hitting a town in Moldova. Air raid alerts could be heard all across the country as blackouts cut off power, heat and water supplies. The enemy very much hopes to use winter against us, to make winter cold and hardship part of its terror. We must do everything we can to survive this winter, no matter how harsh it is. The attacks follow an agreement by G7 nations, the European Union and Australia to set a price cap on Russian oil at 60 US dollars per barrel to limit Moscow's ability to finance its war in Ukraine. On the same day, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that NATO policy is risking a direct clash of nuclear powers. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin visited a bridge linking mainland Russia to the Crimean Peninsula, which was partially destroyed by an explosion in October. The left side of the bridge, as I understand, is in working condition. But still, it suffered a bit, and its condition needs to be ideal. Russia said that the oil cap will not affect its military operation in Ukraine, but will cause difficulties for the global energy market. U.S. and EU officials at a Trade and Technology Committee meeting at the University of Maryland held talks on a wide range of issues, including the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. The talks, which mark the third of their kind, come amid criticism of the act from EU countries that see it as a threat to European jobs, especially in the energy and auto sectors. While both sides say more discussion is needed, they also said preliminary progress was made. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken hosted the third U.S.-European Union Trade and Technology Council meeting in a bid to find common ground on Monday. The world's two largest economies are at odds over U.S. subsidies and tax credits for companies building electric cars and other green technology products in the U.S. I think we have achieved quite remarkable agreement on semiconductors, on how to prevent new shortages, uh, of how to make sure that uh, we have an overview as to what to come, but also on transparency and subsidies. We've seen very practical, positive work done in these three sessions on everything you've heard several of them alluded to, on converging on export controls. And that mechanism proved incredibly uh, powerful, as uh, Secretary Romano said, when it came to dealing with Russia's aggression against Ukraine, on having secure supply chains, particularly for, uh, for semiconductors. Um, convergence on uh, investment screening mechanisms, both inward and, uh, and outward bound. Um, convergence on dealing with non-market practices by certain countries. In each of these areas, this uh, coming together, the TTC, uh, is making practical, concrete progress. Washington's 350 billion euro Inflation Reduction Act aims to build a new industrial ecosystem in clean energy sectors. But Brussels wants to rebalance the playing field where US tax breaks for American production create an unfair advantage. Democrat Raphael Warnock and his Republican opponent Herschel Walker made one final pitch to voters ahead of the runoff election in Georgia, which will determine whether President Joe Biden's party can expand its razor-thin majority in the Senate. A runoff Senate election in Georgia on Tuesday will determine whether Democrats are able to defend the hard-fought seat they flipped just two years ago 
or if Republicans can win it back. Call your father and your mother, your sister and your brother. Call Lottie Dottie and everybody. Tell them it's time to vote. Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock spoke to students at Georgia Institute of Technology Monday, one of many campaign stops in the Atlanta area. While Republican challenger Herschel Walker greeted voters in several North Georgia cities. The high stakes election in the battleground state was the most expensive in 2022. Campaign finance data shows total spending near $400 million. Neither Warnock nor Walker secured more than 50 percent of the vote in November, sending the contest toward a runoff. If Democrats can eke out a win here, that would give the party an outright majority of 51 seats in the upper chamber and sway over committees and judicial appointments. But a win by Walker, a former football star, would better position Republicans to block parts of President Joe Biden's agenda. Warnock, a Baptist pastor, got help last week from singer Stevie Wonder and former President Barack Obama, who sought to paint Walker as unfit for office in a speech that went viral. Since the last time I was here, <laughs> since the last time I was here, Mr. Walker has been talking about issues that are of great importance to the people of Georgia. Like whether it's better to be a vampire or a werewolf. This is a debate that I must confess I once had myself. <laughs> when I was seven. Walker appeared at a campaign rally with Republican Governor Brian Kemp. And while he was endorsed by Donald Trump, the former president has not appeared with Walker after several Republicans warned his presence could turn off moderates, including in the crucial suburbs. He's got morals, he's got stands for the, the freedom of rights and also for the, the freeborn baby. He, uh, he's standing for the abor uh, against abortions. Walker's campaign has been plagued by accusations that he abused girlfriends in the past and paid for their abortions, undercutting his anti-abortion stance. According to the Secretary of State's office, more than 1.85 million Georgians had already cast a ballot during the early voting period. Now, as Mauna Loa, the world's largest active volcano, continues to erupt, the lava may now be on a collision course with one of the Big Island's most critical highways. From across the ocean, the spectacular sight of Mauna Loa's brilliant fury is awe-inspiring. But for residents, it's also a slow motion menace. It's just spreading out on flat ground like you'd expect, kind of like really, really thick pancake batter. Searing hot lava is currently spewing from a fissure on the volcano's northeast slope. The eruption no longer a danger to commercial air travel or in the path of communities. But right now, it is on a collision course with one of the island's most critical highways with no way to stop it. That Fisher's Flow, now a little under two and a half miles from Big Island's Daniel K. Inouye Highway, a thoroughfare between two major cities connecting east with west. If lava reaches the road, it would shut down a vital supply route and add hours to commuter travel. The lava is flowing at about 50 feet per hour. Still, eruptions are unpredictable, and officials are stressing vigilance as Mother Nature's molten threat creeps ever closer. At least 33 people died when a landslide buried a bus in northwestern Colombia and nine have been rescued alive, the interior minister said. The landslide caused by strong rains hit the vehicle between the villages of Pueblo Rico and Santa Cecilia in Risaralda province, about 230 kilometers west of the capital Bogota. Colombia's President Gustavo Petro described the incident as a tragedy in a Twitter message. The bus was traveling from Cali, Colombia's third largest city, to municipality of Condoto in Choco province. Colombia had been hit by an unusually heavy rainy season, blamed on the La Nina weather phenomenon. Events linked to the heavy rains have killed more than 216 people and left 538,000 homeless so far in 2022, according to government statistics. Another 48 people are still missing across the country, the figures show. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. At a time of heightened tensions on the peninsula, North Korea fired artillery shells into the maritime buffer zones. This while there are growing concerns over the possibility of the regime conducting a nuke test. 
North Korea on Monday fired a combined total of more than 130 artillery shells into the East and West Seas. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said that the shells were fired from the North Gumgangun County in Gangwon-do Province and Changsan Cape in Hwangenam-do Province starting at 2.59 p.m. and fell north of the northern limit line within the so-called maritime buffer zones set under the Inter-Korean Military Agreement of 2018. The firings are believed to have come from multiple rocket launchers. The Joint Chiefs also told reporters that the South Korean military, in response to the provocation, communicated warnings to the North multiple times, pointing out that the shell firings violated the 2018 agreement and demanding that the regime cease fire. It added that the military is working with the United States to monitor related North Korean movements and is strengthening its readiness posture so that it's ready for any eventuality. According to a statement released by the Norse military, the provocation was a reaction to drills conducted south of the border, which it accused of escalating tensions before sending a warning of its own. South Korea's Cheolongun County, located some 70 kilometers northeast of Seoul, had posted on its website last week an announcement that the South Korean military would stage live fire exercises this week including joint drills involving multiple rocket launchers on Monday and Tuesday with the U.S. forces Korea. The North's latest provocation also comes a few days after Seoul, Washington and Tokyo, in a coordinated move, slapped additional independent sanctions against individuals and institutions linked to the regime's weapons programs. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa filed court papers challenging a report by a panel of experts that found preliminary evidence he may have violated the constitution and committed misconduct in a scandal dubbed Farmgate. Outside a meeting venue in Johannesburg, a crowd sang its support for Cyril Ramaphosa. But inside, the fate of the South African president was hanging in the balance. The executive committee of his ruling African National Congress met on Monday to discuss allegations he may have committed misconduct and violated his oath of office. That follows a report by a panel of experts into allegations that large sums of foreign currency were hidden at Ramaphosa's game farm and that he failed to report the money missing when it was stolen in 2020. On Monday, Ramaphosa filed court papers challenging the report, while at the executive committee meeting, ANC Treasurer General Paul Mashatile announced the governing party's decision. He said the ANC would vote in parliament against adoption of the panel report. It is the view of the ANC that the decision that, of the NEC, that the decision that we take uh, is in the best interests of the country. Let the president continue with his responsibilities until such time that all these processes requires that he can continue. The scandal, dubbed Farmgate by the media, only came to light in June. It's raised questions over how Ramaphosa, who came to power promising to fight corruption, acquired the cash and whether he declared it. Ramaphosa has denied any wrongdoing and has not been charged with any crimes. On Monday, his lawyers filed papers at South Africa's Constitutional Court seeking for the panel report to be reviewed, declared unlawful and set aside. It is up to the National Executive Committee. Ramaphosa also wants any steps taken by the lower house of parliament, the National Assembly, over the report to be declared unlawful and invalid, the papers showed. The National Assembly is set to debate the report on Tuesday. Now, violent clashes between members of the Roma community and riot police broke out in Greece's second largest city after a 16-year-old was shot in a police chase. Members of the Greek Roma community alongside human rights activists accuse Greek authorities of discriminating against the minority. Violent protests broke out in the Greek city of Thessaloniki late on Monday. The angry demonstrations followed a police shooting of a 16-year-old boy after he allegedly filled his vehicle at a petrol station and drove off without paying. The teenager remains in a critical condition in hospital. 
The officer accused of shooting him in the head has been arrested and suspended from duty. Around 1,500 people took part in the protest, which ended without any arrests or injuries reported. We have some good news for you. With the rapid shift to electric vehicles, there has been concern as to how these batteries could affect the environment. A French company has come up with a way to give a second life to use batteries by reconditioning them to store solar energy. As concern over climate change and the need for clean energy sees an increasing number of people switch to electric cars, these vehicles are fast gaining a larger market share. But some experts are asking how green the batteries that run them really are. They're raising questions about the environmental impact of lithium mining, respect for human rights and alleged child labor in cobalt mines, the high energy costs of production and a recyclability rate of barely 10%. Recycling of uh, materials of uh, of uh, batteries at the same at, at this moment is not that interesting for uh, uh, for recyclers nor for manufacturers because it's much cheaper to extract virgin materials than to recycle them. A Spanish company is trying to give used car batteries a second life. As part of the EU project Stardust, it's reconditioning them to store solar energy, adding at least 10 years to their life. The aging of our batteries have been uh, a lot better than expected. Okay, We expected the batteries to, to degrade, to age, to lose capacity faster. And we've seen that uh, no automotive batteries are lasting more than we expected. That proves that our, our business case makes sense that automotive second life batteries make sense. European Union legislation on sustainable practices in battery recycling is largely outdated, but discussions are currently underway on proposed legislation which could regulate the production chain from extraction to the recycling and reuse processes. South African officials and scientists celebrated a milestone towards building the world's largest radio astronomy instrument, which is co-hosted with Australia and aims to unlock mysteries of the universe. Scientists are a step closer to unlocking the mysteries of the universe as construction begins on the world's largest radio astronomy instrument in South Africa. A launching ceremony for the Square Kilometer Array, or SKA, took place just outside the remote town of Carnarvon, Northern Cape. The location was chosen for its remoteness, with hills providing an extra shield against radio interference. The project, which is co-hosted with Australia, aims to reveal events since the cosmic dawn, when the first stars and galaxies were formed. South Africa's existing Meerkat radio telescope will be incorporated into it, along with 133 new dishes. It's expected to be operational by 2030. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Brazil's soccer legend Pelé has not been moved to intensive care, one of his daughters said, downplaying reports of the 82-year-old battling colon cancer was in end-of-life care after he was hospitalized last week. Former French President Nicolas Sarkozy sought to convince a Paris court to overturn his March 2021 conviction for bribery and influence peddling in an appeal hearing. The initial trial saw Sarkozy sentenced to three years in prison, two of them suspended. Amazon and Apple plan to resume advertising on Twitter after the social media company offered incentives to advertising agencies to raise their spending on the platform. Tesla said media reports which said its plant in Shanghai would cut December output of its Model Y were untrue. Thousands of people braved sub-zero temperatures in Mongolia's capital city to protest against soaring inflation and an ailing economy amid alleged government corruption within the country's coal industry. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with homes in Sydney's southwest, thrilling onlookers with dazzling Christmas lights displays, bringing the Christmas spirit. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.